in 2010. A man and his crew started a podcast on the internet, but they were distracted by real life for a challenge they couldn't commit to. This crew promptly escaped from real life to the, the internet. Today, still wanted by real life, they survive as podcasters of fortune. If you are bored, if nothing else can excite you, and if you can find them, maybe you can listen to Attack of the Awesome. Hello and welcome to Attack of the Awesome, where we make geeky and nerdy look awesome. I'm your host, Mike, and along with me are my co-hosts, Gomer the Renting Thespian. Hello! And by the way, fuck Super Macho Man. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, Pugsley. Hello. Anzi Rosenhaka. Hey there, everybody. And we have a special guest on this episode. Uh, he is known for his retro gaming corner and his top ten with Wiz. He is Guru Wes. Larry. Wes. Hello. Wes, 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 whatever. Hello. Hello. And uh, today is uh, May 19th, 2012. And... <laughs> I'm going to start something new for this episode, and I'm going to talk about what is happening today in geek history. Uh, let's see, 1944, Peter Mayhew, who would go on to play Chewbacca in the Star Wars film, is born. Uh, Andre, Andre the Giant was born in 1946 today in France. Anybody want a peanut? <laughs> uh, let's see what else. In 1955, Java creator James Gosling is born in uh, Alberta, Canada. In 1999, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace opened in theaters today. <laughs> Two minutes later, you could hear screams just... across the galaxy. Yes. <laughs> the same year. Interesting that. Yeah. 99, uh, LucasArts releases Star Wars Episode 1, Racer 2, uh, Episode 1 Racer for Nintendo 64 in the U.S. Oh, the I only good that thing that come out of that good. movie. <laughs> that was like it, but... <laughs> uh, 2002, the X-Files airs its last episode of a 202, 202 show run on Fox. 2005, Netscape 8.0 is released today. In same year 2005, Star Wars Episode 3, Re Revenge of the Sith, opened in theaters today. I actually saw Episode 3 um, on uh, opening night with a cousin of mine. We didn't get like the very first showing, but holy shit, we saw it, and I liked it. And I know some people probably give me crap, but I actually do kind of like it and enjoy it, even for all of its faults or whatever. And I have <laughs> the to least admit, first time, uh, and I have to admit, I, I I tried my best not to laugh when Darth Vader screamed, "No!" <laughs> the rest of the theater cracking up. Uh, let's see. Uh, same year, 2005, the educational game Brain Age Train Your ba Brain in Minutes a Day for the Nintendo DS is released in Japan. Uh, 2008, Nintendo releases uh, launches their Wii Fit exercise game for the Wii system in the United States. Yeah, well, the problem is I can't use it. I weigh too much. <laughs> uh, and lastly... On this day in 2009, UFC 2009 Undisrupted is released on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Truly the most momentous day of all. Yeah. <laughs> Full of Star Wars. <sighs> and uh, let's just hop into the first segment of the podcast, which is called Around the Web, where we talk about pictures, videos, whatever else is awesome on the internet. Who would like to start it off for us? Uh, I guess I will. Um, this is kind of more of a shout-out to a uh, 
friend of mine. She's actually just like in the past couple of weeks started putting up videos on YouTube as kind of a way to help her kind of break out of her shell, so to speak. And if you listen to my show, Thespian Talk, I've you probably have mentioned heard me mention her on it. Uh, the YouTube channel is Axiom Speaks, and, and she go check her out. She tells mostly like just silly stories or whatever. Sometimes I think there's one or two that gets into like a, a serious topic or whatever. Mostly it's silly stories and all that. And there's one where she says she's recording in her underwear. And by the way, guys, she is hot. So, you know, if nothing else, you get a bunch of hot woman talk for about five to ten minutes and hear her say funny things. So, um, go check her out. And that's A-X-I-O-M for those who don't know how to spell Axiom. Axiom Speaks on YouTube. Check her out. All right. We'll do that. <clears throat> uh, anybody else? Uh, should I go or probably you want to go? You can go. Uh, this week I have a awesome video game related around the web video. Uh, first off, it's called the Video Game Rock Medley. It's this huge 10 minute video and it's 34 tracks from the most famous video games you might know back in the day. And this guy named Freddy Greddy does an excellent job with the guitar, uh, keyboard, and the drums, and it's glorious. It's totally for a rock, uh, like a rock fan and a video game fan. I should have to check this out. You can check. For no other reason to see how many Mega Man tracks made it in there. And uh, Pugsley. What do you got? The only, the only musical related music thing that happened in my life is that Soul and Eclipse, a band that I really really like, is not. So much touring, but performing. They have two shows posted on their Facebook, and they're only going to be on the East Coast. Not East Coast, West Coast, sadly. And I'm all the way on the East. So I can't oh. go see them. Somebody oh. should go see them for me. Hmm. Rosen, go see them for her. Someone go see them. Someone go see Soil and Hips for me, because I want to go see them. And then record it for me so I can go watch it. Exactly. Wait, where at on the, where at on the West Coast? Like, I'm in like, New Jersey. Like, no, 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 no. Where are they performing on the West Coast? Like, exactly what what point on the West Coast? Like, are they in San Francisco? Are they Portland? This is like depending on depending on where they at. You know, you could ask different people to go see them for you. Like, if they were in L.A., you could ask Rosen to do it, and then I could. Then if they were up like in Northern California, I could probably bug. You know, probably shout out to Lacey or Spazfox to do it. <laughs> Yeah, just like, hey, go to go to this and record it for me, will you, please? Yes, and put it up, and then Bugsley can watch it and get all moist. <laughs> 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 and uh, lastly, Guru Larry, do you have anything that's awesome you're seeing around the web? No, it's been shit this week, my friend. <laughs> mm. Absolutely nothing of interest whatsoever for me. Okay. Oh man. I, mean, I, can, I can name a couple of porn sites, but you probably want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured I had to ask the guest, so let's move on to another segment called Attack of the News, where we talk about the news in the respective fields of movies, slash TV, video games, music, and some other random nerdy news from toplessrobot.com. So who wants to start off with their news? I'll go ahead. I've only got the one story this week, um, and it is Capcom reevaluating on disc DLC. Capcom has announced that it's reevaluating how, how much on disc downloadable content it will be creating in the future. On the company's official blog, senior vice president Christian Svensson, I guess is how you pronounce it, explained they have been listening to player complaints. We would like to assure you that we have been listening to your comments and. As such, have begun the process of reevaluating how such additional game content is delivered in the future. Uh, and he goes on to talk about um, there are some titles which development began some time ago and are scheduled for release later. You know they won't be able to make those changes, but you know for any future games they will be doing that sort of a thing. And one of those titles confirmed as being such with some. But all of the game's additional content found on the disc is a game called Dragon's Dogma. 
Hmm. Okay. Isn't, that, isn't that good of them? Yeah. yeah. It's so charitable. All they're going to do is just take the di day one DLC and take it off the disc, put it on their servers instead. That's what we're going to do. They're not going to... Yeah. They're doing no, no difference whatsoever. Okay. Yeah, that is the only news I have got this week, unfortunately. I've been I've been basically stuck in Columbus, Ohio half the week, so... Yeah, understandable. And uh, I should go, because I got some good news worthy for the movies. And uh, f first off, uh, the video game series... I think so, we'll find out. Uh, the video... The video game series Need for Speed is going to become a movie. Yes. Is that already been made a movie called The Fast and the Furious? <laughs> yeah. That's, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> it's like, yeah, isn't that already been done? But yeah, but apparently uh, DreamWorks bought the rights to uh, Need for Speed and they want to make a film about it. Yeah. I should order my tickets right now. <laughs> Pre-order your ticket right now. Uh, man, just look out for Needs for Speed coming soon to a theater near you in the future. But they never make movies of it. They never make video games or uh, racing uh, car-related games. They've, they've licensed loads in the past. I mean, Crazy Taxi was going to be made one a couple of years ago. I know, but came I, to being. God, that, I, I know I heard about that. I was like, God, damn, give me a Crazy Taxi movie. Ah. Yeah. Ah, but we'll see what Need for Speed comes out. And, uh... <laughs> have Vin Diesel in it. <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, in non-video game movie news, uh, some classical characters such as... And The Rock. The Rock's got to be Oh, yeah, The Rock, yeah. You gotta have The Rock. You gotta have The Rock. The Rock. Oh, man. Uh, anyways... And that British bloke. What was his name? Paul Walker? <laughs> no, um... Oh, what's his name? The one in the uh, transporter. Jason Statham. Uh, yeah, Jason Statham. Hello. I'm Jason Statham. <laughs> right. I'm a gravelly voiced British person who's in every movie and I do the same character all the time. <laughs> okay. okay, I've ruined the tone now. So. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. Anyways, the next one I have is Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer. You know those characters from the classical Mark Twain books? Huck and Tom? Mm -hmm. I do, yes. They're I'm, not being... that, I'm not that much of a foreigner, you know. <laughs> they're being rebuot, they're rebooted. They're being rebooted in a movie, but with supernatural elements. What? Right. So they're uh... rebooting Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn with supernatural elements. Okay, you you hear that whirring sound somewhere in America? That's Mark Twain spinning in his grave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I just I, I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah, they just want. I would be banging my head on my desk, but it's made of glass. I can't do that. It's it's so it's a script in which Mark Twain's character, it's called it's gonna be called Huck Huck and Tom, in which the Mark Twain characters Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn are adults in a reimagining of the classic duo in the vein of Snow White and the Huntsman with supernatural elements. Nice. What the fuck? Didn't they already do that in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Uh, well, how, how about Cosmic Quest? That's a slightly, you know, the, uh, the claymation movie from the 80s. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> you know, I got even worse. Last one I have. Now, Oliver Twist. Everybody should know what Oliver Twist is by now. The classic book by Charles Dickens. Well, Red Bull, mind you, the Red Bull, is producing a parkour 3D Oliver Twist movie. Did you say hardcore? Is that what that was? 
Oh, and they don't Lisa, charge it now, can too. can I have some more Red Bull? <laughs> yeah, it's tar- starring Taylor Lautner. It's called... Oh, I'm not uh, joking. Yeah, I know. It's it's gonna be called Twist. It's an indie 3D action version of Oliver Twist with parkour. Because Oliver Twist didn't have enough explosions to begin with. Yeah, it it, it will center around the novel's Finnegan Gang, which will use the fiscal vaulting art of parkour to carry out a series of art thefts in the film. Okay, if a you can't call it indie if it's a in 3D, b starring Taylor Lautner. And see, as stupid as this. Well, they're not real stealthy thieves, are they? They're leaping about all over the place. So. Huh. Yeah, so that's the crazy fucked up movie adaptation yeah. reboots. Ah, fuck it. My uh, mind my, 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 is still, still lagging back behind with the Tom Sawyer Hut Finn reboot! <laughs> <laughs> I just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the last person to give up the news is the Rosenhacker. All right, just give me one moment to <clears throat> go inside because I'm actually, as you can tell, I am currently out. Yeah, I can tell. I hear yes, the wind. Uh, uh, I hear the wind. Anyway, um, so yes, I'm just gonna improv this. Okay. Was that right. fun? Yeah. Improvisation. Uh, it's fun today. Yep. All right. Uh, well, there is some stuff I know you missed, Mike. Yeah, what did I miss? Mainly because it hurts. Well, who he, did anyone here unfortunately see the Smurfs? No. I got it on budget for DVD, and I've never seen it taken up. Uh. Well. Don't uh, God, I can't even. They're not only making a sequel, like, about two months before, uh, after it, Smurfs 2 was announced it was in production, Smurfs 3 was greenlit. What? That's yep. Like... <laughs> oh, I, okay. They're I trying to, what are they trying to pop out these movies faster than, 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 than uh, Michelle Duggar can pop out babies? What? <laughs> oh my god. That's a hell of a comparison there. Wow. Have they run out of ideas for the chipmunks then to make sequels? What's the? Oh, oh okay. Oh no, I just I next just had a horrible thought. Saint chipmunks crossover. Oh my god, <laughs> no. Oh, but it gets better. They they roped in Christina Ricci for Smurfs two. Ooh. Do God, really the such, evil... She got such a busy schedule nowadays. Here's yeah. the hot kicker, though. Play the evil version of Katy Perry. <laughs> what? Insert your own joke here. <laughs> oh man. Uh, I would uh, next up, uh, Christina Ricci and Katy Perry kissing, and and that's kind of hot. But anyways, spaghetti. Who's having some? Forgetting who we're dealing with. Uh. Anyway, <laughs> next up, who here has heard of the, un- like, the probably the worst comedians in movie history, Seltzerberg? Yes, and you're, you're going to mention that they are going to do a parody film of the Hunger Games called The Starving Games. Not only that... Oh, but the Wine but, Brothers not available then. But we, uh, no, these guys are worse than the Wayne's Brothers. Oh. God, like, is that possible? If you've ever, if you've ever heard stuff like vampires suck, they did they did that. It was terrible. Oh, oh, well, that was the Wine Brothers. Wow. Epic movie, disaster movie. They were all horrible. But they're not they're not only making that. They're also making an Avatar parody called the biggest movie of all time, 3D. What? <laughs> well then. <laughs> oh my God. I didn't hear well, that. Oh my God. If, if I go yeah, to see this and it doesn't deliver, did. I'm going to demand my money back. <laughs> oh, man. Did we already talk about Axe Cop? Yeah, you did last week. Damn it. Um, how about MC Chris? Uh, uh, what about it? 
his own TV show? He, they're working on it. Or uh, he's trying to get it made. I think you mentioned it before in the previous episode. See, this is why I wish I, ha- I could actually pull up the stories. I know, and it probably sucks. That's it. Uh, come back to me. I'll, I'll go to Google or something. <laughs> That's it, because Pugsley says to go on without her, so... With that, we can help. Wait, no, no, stall, stall, I can find something. Huh? Stall, uh... Um... 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 Look at the poodle in the tutu! Look! Look at it! Look at it! <laughs> hmm. Uh. Um... Hmm... I'll oh, it of course. Shows or uh, going to ask me, what the hell were you yelling about Tom Sawyer for? Oh, yes. yes I remember what I was going to talk about. Uh, you have, uh, guys have all heard about the Wonder Woman pilot, right? Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Well, last year. it's, uh, they amazingly made it worse. Uh, they're making a Green Arrow uh, mo- television show. Yeah. But they've changed. Changed so much. Yeah, I heard about that because they changed the, the the origin a little bit. For one, it's just called Arrow now. Yeah, it's called Arrow. Yeah. Well, they, they don't want to discriminate this... against green people, do they? Yeah. Well, this I uh, I like how Tom Roma well, put it. They said uh, there's two reasons. One, uh, it's a superhero movie, and you know we all know how like how in the toilet those are, right? Mm-hmm. Especially after, especially after the Avengers bombed. Did it? Oh wait, no, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, it, uh, the, the second point being, they didn't want people to, to confuse it with Green Lantern because being green was the only problem with that movie, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, yes, and uh, they uh, and after that, they gave a brief plot synopsis and. See how many things you can spot that are wrong with this. <clears throat> oh, boy. I'll, I'll go quickly. After a violent shipwreck, billionaire playboy Oliver Queen was missing and presumed dead for five years before being discovered alive on a remote island of the Pacific. When he t- returns home to Starling City, his b- devoted mother Moira, much b- beloved sister Thea, and best friend Tommy welcome him home. But they sense all... Fuck, I'm, just not, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but basically... They changed his friends' names for no reason. They changed his city's name for no reason, and they made his mom evil for no reason. Huh. Wow. Oh, and they made him Batman. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I noticed that. Batman got an evil mother. Uh, oh, Jesus. But are you kidding me? I'm still watching that this fall when it comes out. Just see how Why? Bad. I mean, it. it you train just, wreck syndrome, my boy. Have you train seen, wreck syndrome. Have, have you seen the trailer for it? It, yes, leave it, it to the professionals. Exactly, it makes it look Mainly awesome. Me. I suffer through bad TV, so you don't have to. Uh, I don't think so. I suffer through bad TV as well, but especially if I'm watching Elementary, the uh, CBS Sherlock Holmes, the U.S. version of Sherlock Holmes, with uh, Lucy Liu with Joanne Watson. Who am I? That's coming out this fall. And, uh, yeah. Let's hop into the weird news. And, uh, let's throw a wild card before going to the video game related weird news. I got a wild card for you. Uh, three men steal penguin hangover style during the n- during a night of drunken hijinks. A penguin. Hmm. Uh, uh. A penguin. Of all the things to steal, why a penguin? Alright. <clears throat> he wanted he wanted the penguin suit, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, it's Peter, clearly it's Peter Dinklage just naked and drunk. Huh. One of the men who stole Dirk, the, sea, the penguin from SeaWorld, has told Seven News he's sorry and never meant to harm the animal. Reporter Amanda Abate joins us now live from our bureau in Service Paradise. And Amanda, he, he handed over video to prove his remorse. He has K. It shows he and his friends trying to interact with Dirk in his Southport apartment. Rhys Jones says that he knows they did something wrong. He accepts the punishment, but wants people to know that it was a prank that got out of hand. 
Oh, Mr. Penguin. Early Sunday morning, three hungover friends woke to find a penguin in their living room. Can't believe how a penguin in my apartment, man. You stole a penguin. A fairy penguin from SeaWorld. The previous night, the men slipped past security, broke into an aquarium, and took Dirk with them. <laughs> and that's not all they did that night. I'm going in there, man. Still undetected by SeaWorld security, they swam with the dolphins. Yo, look at them! Let's go get the penguin, man. We're being <laughs> that is amazing. A friend of the three men originally tried to sell the video so they could afford a lawyer. Seven News never paid a cent. They gave it to us in an attempt to prove they meant no harm. We are all three of us sorry for SeaWorld and the time lost, you know, searching for Dirk, you know, and um, yeah, just glad he's all right. It was a grand plan, but not a good one. Instead of returning, Dirk Reese jones says he panicked and released him into a canal. He was later found in distress but unhurt and has returned to SeaWorld a celebrity. Now, at the request of the man, Seven has given the video to police. They'll face court next month, charged with trespass, stealing and unlawfully keeping a protected animal. <clears throat> Three Welsh tourists... Insert Welshy joke here. Yes. I you know, I'm going to nick a penguin. <laughs> <laughs> These three Welsh, three Welsh tourists in Australia had themselves quite a night, which ended up with a scenario fans of the movie The Hangover would certainly recognize. After consuming a few too many elf adult beverages, the trio broke into the local Sea World and swarm with the the sw swarm with the dolphins. <laughs> they swarm? <were> swarm. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's how it's written. That's how it's written. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Mr. Ed Mr. or Mrs. Editor, were you doing your job? Did you forget to catch that? Oh, swarm. <laughs> swarm with the dolphins. <laughs> if I could swarm with the dolphins, the soft and gentle dolphins. Mama, I want to go to sea so I can swarm with the dolphins. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm amazed they didn't say spawn. I know. Anyways, the re the uh, revealers claim things get hazy after that. So when they woke up the next morning with and a seven year old fairy penguin named Dirk was in their room, and they said they had no idea how he okay, got that's there. An amazing name for a penguin. Dirk. I don't know how why, did I but have amazing... Did I ask it? <laughs> it's like, okay, what's the penguin's name? Dirk. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dirk Penguin. That's awesome. I am you Dirk. You can totally see him. As, you can totally see a spy movie called Dirk Penguin, P.I. Or <laughs> oh, Dirk. hey, original movie idea for Hollywood. Yeah, Disney's gonna go. steal it now. Exactly. Yes, take yeah. James Bond and add a fucking penguin. Yes. Hmm. Uh, let's see. After sh Dirk oh. Penguin. Uh, let's see. After shooting video of the Arctic Berg, the men released him into a nearby canal. The next day, pass buyers noticed Per Dirk being chased by a dog? What? <laughs> and SeaWorld officials were able to rescue and return him home. Wow. Oh, as, for the, as for the men, even though they maintained they, maintained they were too drunk to remember snatching the penguin, they apparently made reference to the stolen bird on their Facebook accounts during their crime. So it didn't take long for their authorities to figure out who, would, who they were and arrested them. Uh, note, to, note, note to any criminals out there. I, I'm going to say this right now. I don't think any of us can own actually going out and committing crimes. You know. But if you do, do not advertise it on Facebook. <clears throat> I'm so, I'm really sorry for all the trouble we caused," said one of the men, who are all facing charges of trespassing and stealing and unlawfully keep, keeping a protected animal. Mm. Ah, oh. hangover style. Oh wow! Don't let the movie influence you. And now to the video game-related weird news. First off, Assassin's Creed. Good game. I assume. I never played it. <laughs> the first one's a bit incredibly repetitive, but the second one's a, the second one's a lot better, a hell of a lot better. The better ones are. 
Anyways, the, uh, the title is Author's Lawsuit Claims Ubisoft Ripped Off With Ripped Him Off With Assassin's Creed. To most people, the concept behind the Assassin's Creed games seems unique, but the setup in which incorporates Jack into uh, ancestral memories to relive the past sound a bit too familiar to sci-fi author John L. Buswiga, Buswiga, who says the franchise ripped off his 2003 novel, Link. You're just now noticing this? Apparently so. I'm actually making a connection to something most people probably would not be expecting me to make the connection to. I, I used to watch uh, some, a couple of American soap operas, and um, one of them was called uh, Port Charles. And one of their storylines had something kind of similar to it. They had two characters, like, take uh, some drug or something, and while they were unconscious, they somehow you know, traveled back in time to, like, their ancestors or some, to be their ancestors or something like that. That's what this all is reminding me of. Yeah. So uh, I wonder, I wonder if they got the idea from the same place. <laughs> uh, probably. Uh, Bun Swiga, who should be happy that Nintendo isn't suing him for using the name of its Legend of Zelda hero to title his book, wants 1.5 million to settle his claim. This guy's an idiot. A judge could jack up the figure up to 5.25 million, but he rules that Ubisoft willfully infringed on his copyrights. Huh. Yeah, the time to file this was four years ago, dumbass. Yeah. Well, um, or I six actually, years ago. I read up on this. I read up on this story. Um, there was loads of reviews for the book on Amazon, and actually, somebody was complaining that his book rips off Doom. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's. Why would you? So, <laughs> wow. Okay. So, yeah, they, they Why would you have rip, rip off, off Doom? Doom? So. Doom sucks. Oi. <laughs> Ah, oh, it's got Sting in it. Everybody likes Sting. <laughs> oh no, I hate Dune. Uh, wait, are, we, are you talking the film or the book? Uh, the book. Ah, uh, the film. I have not read the book. I have. The I books. hated the movie. I love the books. Oh, oh man. Ah. Uh, anyways, next. Uh, porn site sponsors pro gamer. Of course it does. Of course it does. Online porn empire Brazzers 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 Yeah It shows you don't go there does if you can't pronounce it So which one of us goes there Announce they're going to sponsor a team of fighting game players Sweet Their first signing was a New York area player Lee L.L. Joe, who delivered the news along the Zazzers employee Rob Steele on a Twitch.tv live stream. The pair also received the Bazazzers plan to host their own tournament. Wait, how does this work? A porn site sponsoring virgins. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Oh, my God. Uh... Uh... Are porn and gaming a perfect match? Time will tell, but as far as this community... Here's see- the hint. No! But it involves a waggling a lot of joystick, so... <laughs> it seems split on the partnership with some tournament organizers saying the Zazzers will be banned from commentary at their events, taking away as much as the value of their sponsorship. But they said a boom headshot's going to be boom money shot. Coke, do you have to snore for this to be a good idea? And speaking of oh. Coke, it leads into the next story. Oh, dear. Oh, God. Nice segue, Rosen. <laughs> Xbox 360 fails as hiding spot for cocaine. <laughs> oh, you know, there's all those gears. Yeah. yeah. You know, that white powder in the gears is just new. All right. Yeah, when your Xbox red rings, the solution is not stuff it full of cocaine. That will not get it going again. That just will make it worse. It also, take cocaine, and they 
just go all over the place. Xboxes don't do that. You know, actually, this could go, just yeah. he could have just put in uh, the game Scarface, The World is Yours. Oh, <laughs> snap. The, the picture I launched my little 360. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they, the picture they show here is they, they just open the Xbox 360 up and there's like cocaine in it. And that's what they show. It's like, okay, they must have opened the Xbox very carefully, put the cocaine, in, close it back up, reassemble it. Anyways, you know, you know, for some reason, I'm reminded of uh, the uh, the "What the fuck is wrong with you?" story, where uh, someone snuck into prison with a gun shoved up their ass. A gun? <laughs> yeah, like like Fluid fully assembled, ass. fully assembled, and apparently rusty. Uh huh. <laughs> oh god. Anyways, uh, in El Paso, you, this wasn't this wasn't like was this was like this was like this this was like huge revolver. God damn! As they put it, I'll this man it. will never shit properly again. Indeed. He'll never, sh never shit properly, or shoot properly. Both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh boy. <clears throat> Anyways, <clears throat> cocaine in the 360. Uh, in El Paso, the El Paso County Sheriff's Office strike team pulled over a suspect who keeps eyeing a bag in the passenger seat. The lawmen and their trusty dog search team sniffed out the bag to find out, find not only a exposed brick of cocaine, but a Xbox 360, 360 stuffed with another two bricks. I've heard of breaking your system, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, that was good. Uh, you know, I'm curious, how much is one brick? Uh, let me continue. Uh... K Fox 14 reports the suspect criminal mastermind has a total of 1.8 kilograms. Oh, the street value. I, again, I can beat that. The street uh, value. You know those you went, go ahead, go ahead. The street value of which was even more than a overpriced Xbox 360 hard drive. Jesus. Yes, uh, I can beat that. Uh, again, I was what the fuck is wrong with you? Your reruns. Uh. Someone with a uh, U fake UN diplomat pouch where, you know, you can't actually search those things, but this one was obviously fake, mm -hmm. uh, had 16 kilograms of cocaine in there. Oh, wow. Yikes. Yeah. For, for some perspective, that's about 40 pounds. 40 pounds of coke. Yeah. Damn. How much is that? Sweet value, though. And this man was trying to sneak it, I think, through the UN. <laughs> and get everybody, get everybody in the UN high on coke. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'll work. <laughs> and that is the weird news. <laughs> I think, it, I think, I think the weird news just killed Rose. <laughs> Probably. Oh no. <laughs> Oh no! We oh. try again. We cast revive on Rosen. Ding! Okay. Ding! Did it work? Hello, Rosen. Yeah. I'm... Okay, I'm just. Okay, there we go. Okay, just making sure because you, we lost you there for a sec. But yeah. Anyways, we had to cast a revive spell on you. Yeah. And we go into the last part of the podcast, known as the top ten, and. This episode's going to yes. be special because I'm letting Gomer read the top ten for this episode. Ah, yes. Ah, crack of the knuckles. Crack of the toes. Crack of the knees. Oh, no. Crack of the elbows. Ah, now this week's top ten list is ten things you didn't know about the Nintendo Entertainment System. Unless you're like, unless you're someone like me, you probably knew most of them. Number one on the list... It was originally titled the Famicom. The Nintendo uh, Entertainment. Yeah. Okay, who didn't know that? The... Yeah, 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 I know, yeah right? exactly. Every, I think everybody and their grandfather knows this. Yes. Uh, because they it was known as the Famicom in Japan. Because it sounds like some sort of female annotation device, isn't it? <laughs> <So>. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And... And of course, on here it also says uh, the Famicom system also received add-ons, never made it to the U.S. like floppy disk drive and a basic pack 
that came with a keyboard to program your own games. Why didn't we get that? Fuckers! <laughs> that would have been awesome. That would have been. That would have yep. been. Yes. Never happened, though. All right. Yeah. All right. I did make two. one game that was compatible with it over here, though. A, yeah. um, uh, Excite Bike. You could actually, if you could connect it to a, a cassette player, you could save your maps. Your courses. Oh. Huh. That, I never knew that. Huh. Hmm. All right. Number two on this list. It had the first cross-shaped deep ever. Uh, Kunepe Yokoi. Yeah, hmm. you know, the, the dude who created the Game Boy and, well, the Virtual Boy as well, was also the inventor behind the very first cross-shaped D-pad. I'm Metroid. He created Metroid as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. He originally designed it for a handheld version of Donkey Kong, and Nintendo was like, hey, you know what? That's what we need for this new console. Give it here. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one, this one when I first when I first read the title for this one, I, I questioned it. I know everybody else is going to question this at first too. Only two games didn't come in gray cartridges. Now wait, the only games that didn't come in gray cartridges were Zelda and Zelda Two, which were available in gold. But they do note that they had a, there were a few games in black or blue cartridges as well. But those were unlicensed games with that, that oh-so-important Nintendo seal of approval. So, yeah. I, I think they should have retitled that only two licensed games didn't come in gray cartridges, but, you know, that's whatever. Yeah. Can you name them, though? Let's see, the, the unlicensed licensed ones. No, the uh, licensed ones. What are the licensed ones? The licensed ones are uh, Zelda and Zelda 2. They came in the gold. Oh, okay. Yeah. And... Oh, I thought you said another, ah, another yes. Hello. <laughs> oh. I'm really screwing this up for you, aren't I? <laughs> 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 Screw you up. All right, next one on the list. The NES had download content and almost allowed online gambling. <laughs> Famicom modem was released for the system in Japan in 1988. It didn't allow for online play, but there was actually a small amount of downloadable content released on the service. The modem was used to check for game cheats, jokes, weather forecasts, and even make live stock trades. Because, you know, we all want to trade stocks on yes, Well, mm -hmm. Famicom. Case. It was tested in the U.S. by the Minnesota State Lottery to allow gamers to play all of the games for a service charge of $10 a month. And, of course... Parent groups balked at the idea of allowing gambling through a system targeted at children under 18, and the plan was nixed. Because, hmm. you know, children can't gamble. You know, they should be allowed to gamble. Think of the children! <laughs> well, don't let your children play those. Derp. <laughs> uh. Uh. Now, we all know the power glove. It's so bad. It's but so it's bad, also yeah. Sold, but it also sold 100,000 units. Huh. Well, that I did not know. I did not know that either. I managed to get used a long time ago, which unfortunately has since been lost. But, oh well. Uh, while it's generally considered to have been incredibly inaccurate and pretty much the worst way to play a game on the NES, don't I know it, the Power Glove was intriguing to a whole lot of gamers. This overpriced accessory appeared on, in the Fred Savage gaming movie The Wizard, in which the villain uses it to perfectly control a match of Rad Racer. Nintendo managed to take in 88 million off of this add-on. To the two games that were made specifically for the Power Glove, Super Glove Ball, and ba bleh, Bad Street Brawler, hardly moved any units, however, and the accessor accessories ultimately deemed a failure, albeit a prof profitable one. Oh, you make profit off, and I wouldn't call it a failure. But, but yeah. that's just me. It's so bad. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The next one on the list, a Nintendo Entertainment System game once sold on eBay for more than $22,000. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. The rarest licensed Nintendo game of all time is generally considered to be Stadium Games, an Olympic-style and field competition. Fewer than 200 copies made it to the consumers before the game was recalled and refilled to fit the power pad. 
It's the game that many people got bundled with Duck Hunt and Mario Brothers. Pop quiz. Who, how many of you guys can name that one? Anybody? I don't, don't know. Hello? <laughs> what are we having issues now? God damn it. I didn't even know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Hello? Hello? Oh no! Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Alright, yeah. I guess we're back. Oh, <laughs> damn. I'm going to have to do all that again. Um, where no, no, we'll just here? edit it in. Yeah, I'll just edit it all together. Yeah. Yes. And we'll um, pretend to be more interested this time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I believe we just finished the bit about the power glove. Okay, yes. so... Yes. Alright, so I'll start with the ne this one here. A Nintendo game once sold on eBay for more than $22,000. Wow. Yeah. The rarest Gold licensed... Gold cartridge out? Nope. Oh. The rarest licensed Nintendo game of all time is generally considered to be stadium games, an Olympic-style track and field competition. Fewer than 200 copies made it to consumers before the game was recalled and retooled to fit the power pack. It's the game that many people got bundled with Duck Hunt and Mario Brothers when they bought their consoles. Pop quiz for you guys. What is the name of that third game? Track and Field? No? No. Is it? What is it then? I believe it was called it, World wait, Class Wait, is it track International field? Track and Field? Something with Track and A World yeah. Class. Uh, no, it's something to do with Track and Field. I don't know what. Track Yes. Yeah. Well, it did have, like, the whole track and field theme. But it was called World Class Track and Field. Huh. And it estimated that, it's, that around 20 copies of the original stadium games still remain in good condition, though. And an unopened copy sold on eBay a few years ago sold for $22,800. Now... The rarest game pack that did not make it to retail? Anybody want to guess? Wow. Just Yeah, just guess. Nobody? Cheetah Man. Anybody? Uh, Cheetah Man. Huh? Is it not Action 52? Nope. nope. Damn it. Nope. Cheetah Man 2. No. Um, that's not what's... That's not what's on this list, Earthbound. Please. It is the old... Huh? Earthbound. Nope. According to this, the gold Nintendo World Championships cartridge, a game that was only given out to finalists for the 1990 competi competition. I wish I had been able to do that. Yeah. Uh. Next up, the success of the NES was due to Rob. Rob the that Robot only two games. Yeah. Nintendo knew that it was releasing the NES at a dangerous time. The great video game crash had just happened, and Atari 2600 cartridges were cluttering up bargain bins all around the country. Their idea was to market the Not to mention a kid. canyon. Yes. And a landfill. That's but what I meant. How to convince those parents to pick up... Yeah. How to convince those parents to pick up a system? Well, get their kids to cry that they want the robot. Thanks to some clever commercial starring Rob, Nintendo sold a million NES systems that first year. Then they dumped Rob when word was out on the gaming system. It outlived his usefulness, and when people realized the games with him were well garbage, and like the Power Glove, very few games supported him. He's still plotting his revenge to this day. <laughs> dun dun dun. Ha ha ha. Now, the next one, I looked at this, and I said, oh shit. <laughs> Blowing on your cartridges helped destroy them. Everyone who had an NES eventually had problems getting a game to play, dealing with that annoying blinking power light by pulling out the cartridge and blowing on it. But did you think you were blowing dust out of it? You weren't. You were actually lining the contacts with a layer of moisture from your breath, 
well, spit, basically. And by doing that, you were contributing to the oxidation of the copper contacts, and eventually the game wouldn't work at all. That explains so much. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a copy of Punch Out once, it was absolutely covered in verdigris. It was so far gone, the copper. Yeah. Ah, the next one. There was almost a Hellraiser first person shooter. Yes, on the NES. On the on <laughs> what? That, that would be terrible. <laughs> yeah. Developer Color Dreams, oh we know those guys, was very close to creating the only first person shooter on the system. But the problem was that the NES just couldn't handle it. Hellraiser was supposed to run on its own internal processor called the Z80, which would have three times the power of the NES itself, and supposedly portray 16-bit graphics. The cartridge would also contain a whopping 64K of RAM to handle the graphics, which were supposed to be stunning for the time. As for the actual game, it would see the players trapped inside the Hellraiser puzzle box, racing around trying to find a way out of the maze while all avoiding Pinhead and the other Cenobites shooting anything on the way. But, despite the appearance of an ad in gaming magazines that showed the tech, Color Dreams realized that the price of the processor and RAM would have raised the price of each cartridge to around $80. And although they had such sites to show us, the project was scrapped. <coughs> yeah. This could be me being cynical, but I, I have a feeling if they tried to do something like that nowadays, they'd say, print this! Yeah. You know, Alright, print it. And finally, to the absolute surprise of probably nobody, Super Mario Brothers is the best-selling NES game of all time. While Super Mario Brothers was helped immensely by being packed in many system bundles, the game managed to sell over 40 million copies. Super Mario Brothers 3, which sold 18 million copies, is in second place, while Super Mario Brothers 2, which sold 10 million copies, is third. There were 62 million NES systems sold, and more than 500 million games. So chances are that if you had an NES, you had Mario. The two simply did not exist separately. How true that is. Very true. Uh, and that is the t 10 things you didn't know about the Nintendo Entertainment System. Or so they thought you didn't know. Yeah. I... I yeah, I thought it was a pretty good list, D despite yeah. despite the stuff we do know already about it. Oh yeah, oh, it allowed online gambling. That would have been that would have been fun. <laughs> Let's gamble online. Yes, mom, I want to play the lottery game. No, you cannot play the lottery game. How old are you? You are ten. You cannot play the lottery game. Do you have ten bucks per month to pay for it? <laughs> Uh, I'm reminded, actually, one night we actually uh, picked up a copy of Snake's Revenge when it was like kind of new and everything. And my dad spent all, all night playing that game, only got up to the first boss. Hmm. And it's with that mindset I have to wonder, if they had the online gambling, how late would, I, would either of my parents have been on the NES every night? <laughs> trying to win? I would think the question would be, where would you be living now? <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> Uh, any uh, final thoughts before we end the podcast? Yes. Wicked thoughts, anal warts. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And with that... <laughs> <laughs> just went up my mind. Whoop. Yes. With that, this is Attack of the Awesome, signing off. Good night. Woo! When do I get paid? <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time this happened to us. No, this is a non-profit podcast. Yeah. I wish I got paid. I wish I got paid. But no!